In this video, we're going to demonstrate how the Matrix SL9 readout head uh, can be used with the same bias and pixel and, um, and, and um, array threshold settings. And we're going to demonstrate that by moving the same crystal around to different pixels and looking at the energy resolution, we're going to show that we've got a very uniform um, detector head and we're going to show that you can see uh, pretty, pretty similar energy resolutions across the entire head, all from the same bias settings. So we have the we have a single pixel uh, with a crystal on it um, already shown in this configuration. Now we're going to put it into the light type light type container. We're going to go ahead and load up the Matrix Nine software on the screen. We're going to connect. Um, we're connected to channel one. That's good. We're going to run uh, the readout just to give us an idea of the pixel number. Um, that's pixel number eight. And sorry, that's array eight, pixel 16. Sorry, array eight, pixel 15, because it starts at zero. I'm going to halt the readout. Um, we're going to go into the plot energy screen, uh, channel 1, array 8, uh, pixel 15, and we've previously set this up, so we're going to run a plot um, on that, showing plot fit. Um, now the energy plot is running. Uh, we're fitting between 285 and 420. As I said, this was previously set up, so um, this is working, no surprise. Um, we will move the, the crystal around a little bit more so you can see how the um, the the unit operates uniformly. So you can see here uh, as we're collecting the data, the resolution is all below 14 percent. It's about 13.88, 13.96, 13.93, somewhere in that range, um, and that's just uh, shown from the fit from 285 to 420 on the energy bins. So I'm happy that that's a pretty good plot, and I'm happy that that's that's good data. We're going to halt that. And we're going to now um, take the unit out of the light tight container. And we're going to move the crystal onto a different pixel. And we can show on the screen we're just moving it over to a totally different um, pixel. And while you're doing all of this, the, the unit is is protected and internally and it doesn't you're not going to damage the SPMs by leaving it bias. So you can see we've left the bias on, we're not making any changes there. All we did was move the crystal to another pixel. We're going to completely make it as dark as we can here in our lab environment. Um, that's now connected, that's now ready to go. I'm going to connect now on the screen, I'm going to connect to the unit I'm going to run the readout again. Okay, now you can see that, that my my pixel has now moved over to array zero, and that is now array zero pixel zero one two three four five six seven eight. So that is array zero pixel eight. So I'm going to halt the readout. I'm going to go to my plot energy window, and now I'm still in channel one but my array has moved to array 0, so I'm going to increment that so it transitions from 8 to 0, and now I'm worried about, I'm concerned about pixel 8, so I'm going to increment my pixel number until I got, get to 8. So that's channel 1, array 0, pixel 8, and now I'm going to um, plot that. Uh, energy plot is running, and the plot fit range 285 to 420 was left from the previous um, system setup. Um, it's probably, actually looking at that, it's probably going to be okay for this measurement setup. Um, it's showing about 14, 13.9, 13.99. It's about 14%, 14.06. Um, you can see it there on the screen. It's hovering at around 14% energy resolution um, from a totally different array and a totally different pixel. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. And, and as well, we haven't changed the bias setting. We haven't changed the um, threshold setting on the pixel or the array. Um, that's all operating at the same, at, at exactly the same settings, and we're able to fit at the same 
points. And we're getting around, I would say, around 14% energy, res energy resolution from that, um, that pixel. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'm happy to stop the measurement there and halt that and move to another pixel. So now we're going to leave the system running. That's OK. It's not going to hurt anything. We're going to move the crystal onto a, another array. And we're going to move it onto another pixel. Um, every time we do this, we you know we'll have a look at the amount of coupling grease, the Saint Gobain BC630, just to make sure that there's still still some grease there to allow us to make a good contact. Um, we we'll carefully place the crystal over the the SPM pixel. Uh, we typically do that visually. So we've got a nice. Uh, it's very robust. We're not going to damage it. Um, now we're going to cover that up in the dark, the dark container. Okay. Um, we'll connect again. Make sure that we've we've connected. Everything is okay. Uh, the green lights are still on. Um, I'm going to run. I'm going to click on the run readout of the coincidence readout control to show that we've now moved on to array one. So that's array one, um, and we're at pixel. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that is pixel 7 of array 1. Um, so I'm happy that I've got uh, my crystal onto a new pixel. I'm going to halt the readout now. And I'm going to go into the plot energy mode. Um, and as, I sh as I've shown you before, we will need to change to array 1. And I'm going to change the pixel to pixel 7. So I'm just going to click through the 16 different pixels that I have to look at. And I'm going, going to go into pixel 7. Um, I'll click on Save Plots to make sure that I save the pixel number. You can see here on the report that there's been a success. So that's good. And I'm going to keep my, 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 my curve fitting range low and high exactly the same as before, um, just, just, as, uh, just to see how, the, how well this will work. Um, I've selected my energy plot. My energy plot is running. Um, you can see that the this is a totally this is a different array. Um, it probably has a slightly different breakdown voltage, um, so therefore it is um, positioned slightly different in a different place on the energy bin plot, and therefore my curve fitting doesn't um, doesn't do well with my previous settings. That's okay. There's no there's no issue with that at all. What we'll do is we'll wait until we've got some decent data, um, and then we're going to halt the measurement. And what I want to do is I want to pick the uh, low energy point, which I estimate is about 220. And I'm going to pick the high point, which I estimate at about 320. I'm going to save that range. And now I'm going to replot all of the data um, with my new settings. And I that looks a lot better. Um, I probably would have put my high point a little bit higher, so I'm just going to halt the processing there, and I'm going to bring this um, high setting to 325. I'm going to save that, and now I'm going to plot it again, and we should be able to see a good energy resolution curve fit coming out of that. We've got a very nice um, consistent looking curve coming out of the software. And we can see the 511 peak. We can see the Compton continuum. And we can see the 1.2 MeV uh, peak from the uh, secondary peak from the sodium 22 source. So that's all working very well. And once again, we can see an energy resolution uh, of about 14.1, 14.1 14 is probably the best way to describe it. Um, and so all of that, those three energy resolution measurements were done from different SPM pixels on top of a matrix SL. And I think the, the important point to take away is that all of those, um, all of those um, s measurements were done with the same bias setting, the same threshold settings. Um, so this just tells you that once you get the unit um, up and running properly, that you can get uh, measurements from across the entire array um, very, very easily and very accurately with a high degree of, of uniformity. So that's actually, that data looks pretty good to me. I'm willing to stop that. That's at about 14.1.